Shirai Ryu Fire Garden. I just realised that entire time that my mic was muted. I literally just gave a whole spiel and no one heard it. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, so let me rewind back again. Hey everybody, <laughs> welcome to Gab's Dojo. Um, last week was on resource management. This week is basically on training mode, which is like the last lesson of block two. Yeah, I know streamer struggles, right? Jeez. Um, so with training mode, this is actually one of the key things why I wanted to do this series to begin with, because beforehand some people that I've spoken to that wanted to get better have you know asked for tips or struggled in matches and I'm like well I have used the term you know just uh, go and lab it or go into training mode and look at things and then one of the responses I got was I don't know how to use training mode so then I thought well if people don't know how to use training mode how could they effectively learn and improve um, and especially since even though a lot of things are self-explanatory they're not if you don't know then you don't know so I figured this for, to be a key lesson of basically going through the options the ins and outs of training mode and what options could be used for um, in terms to help improve um, so this is like learn how to lab Mm, kind of kind of it's basically going through the ins and outs of training mode so you have the tools to effectively lab so training mode essentially you need this mode in order to improve as a player it's absolutely essential to use this um, I wasn't exaggerating when I said it needs to be your spouse, your lover, your best friend, your favourite pet, all the greatest hits in order for it to, uh, for all for you to improve. Um, so, basically, as you can see, it's a varied amount of options um, down here. Controls are self explanatory, which, by the way, I hope you people from last lesson have this on now and learning your KBs um, aside from that variations are self-explanatory reset self-explanatory if I to select self-explanatory so I'm mainly going to be focusing on the top four options here move list A options practice options and recall playback um, Record and move list will be gone over quickly, but these two are the key ones, AI and practice options. I'm going to try and go through this as quickly and painless as possible, uh, so that you don't have glazed eyes or bursting headaches by the end of it, because there is a lot that you can do in this mode, which is what makes this so extensive. Um, but let's get through it. Let me just quickly catch up with the chat before... Um... I start, I just scream if I don't know the matchup, interesting. You people. Hey. <laughs> okay, first thing. Let's blitz over this. Move list. Move list is self-explanatory, you see your moves. Um, you see your frame data, uh, which, while it's there, you don't necessarily need it. Um, from here because there is an option in practice mode to have it on the screen you have your power system already it's good good choice um, I guess it has your finishes and whatnot what it's helpful for is obviously tagging tagging moves that you know if you're playing a new character you don't know much about you tag them and remember why do I have flawless block on you don't want that that's for later. Yep, cool. Um, I'm already confused. Why? <laughs> I've only just started. 
So really, the move list, you will only be using it really for tagging moves um, for like new characters or characters you want to learn against. That's the main thing you would use it for. And in case you don't know, triangle to tag a move and then it appears. And just to clear it all, just hold triangle and that's all good. That is really all you need to know about move list. You don't really need to um, use it for much else more than this because um, it's self explanatory. Um, next, record and playback. Let me slow down a bit. <laughs> so, record and playback. Basically, it allows you to record a section of your practice session. So you just pick an empty slot, press square to record, and then it starts recording, allowing you to do whatever. Now, this is about 75 seconds worth of recording that you can do. And when if whether you finish recording what you want, you just do a touchpad and then it saves. And then later you can play it back. Um I personally don't use this mode like ever. I'm not gonna lie. But um if you were to use it, um you can use it for like say you had a match in ranked or combat league or a set and there's a certain thing certain string or certain moves that another character's doing that's really been bothering you and you want to look into how to deal with it but let's say you're on limited time you can use record and playback to record whatever that character is doing um, and then have it saved and then when you come back to the game later on a day later a few days later you have that section to watch and refresh yourself that this is what I was planning to look at and then go back to the real training mode and then see what you can to do with it anybody know how to get jokers back forward to into crushing blow I don't actually know I haven't really looked at joker much to be honest I probably should do that sometime soon. Um, how to block sub zero's 50 50, for example. Potentially. So I blitz through that. That is basically all you really need to know about move list and record playback. Now, the key ones are AI and practice options. So I'm going to start with practice options first and go through that as quick as I can without boring you. You want my accent, Sarang Bay? I guess if you come over and live here for a while, you might be able to get it. Right, practice options. Practice options basically sets up your stage for training. Um, so these are all the options that you got. Reset position is basically self-explanatory. When you reset the mode by pressing touchpad or another button if you've got a different pad, it just starts it again. Um, and you can go left or right if you want, like one of the corners. That's not right. Yeah, like if you want one of the corners. And even so, you can choose the distance as well. If you want to have it up close, like maybe if you're practicing combos, you want it close every time you reset. Or if you want full distance, like I don't know, if you want to do zoning, you can play full screen. Um, if you want to have a specific position, like say I wanted to do maximum distance KB for dash punch. Which I think it's about here. You can do something called update save position um, and if you press accept on that no matter what I do when I reset 
it goes to that safe position. So, there you go. So, that is basically the reset uh, position. Nothing too exciting. How to figure out the moveset of Scarlet with her blood port. Eh, interesting. Gav, when you have time, please explain proper spacing. Define proper spacing, Sarang Bay. Other practice option gauge basically is how offensive meter behaves or defensive meter behaves. So when you spend it, it refills normally. Um, if you go to refill, it automatically refills, which is helpful for practicing uh, combos. Um, in case you drop a combo, you know, if you do it twice, instead of waiting for it to recharge or reset in, you can uh, just set the refill. And four basically means it never goes off. Easy caution blows when you have them on. Basically, it allows you to do caution blows without fulfilling the requirements. So, if you wanted to do down two, instead of setting up like recording or reversal, someone doing a throw, you can just do down two straight away and it automatically, um, aut automatically activates. Um, again, helpful for practicing um, caution blow combos that you may have, like specific ones. Now, but bear in mind, because of that, it allows you to do some combos which don't actually work, but are kind of fun to do. Like so. Now, obviously, this doesn't work in real life, but, you know, that's what happens with KBs being on. Well, easy KBs being on. So when you're done with it, always remember to turn it off so that it doesn't give you false information um, remember I told us to stop backing up oh about walking forward that's not for this lesson that's a future lesson right um, life simply put puts the percentage of life that you have 1% to as much as you want and you can do the same for player 2 or set his own separate individual life. I usually have 1% because I want to do well gives me access to fatal blow and fatal blow combos. Damage info is self-explanatory shows the damage of a move um, button lock is the same which I recommend to have on basically records your inputs um, it can especially help you if you're doing combos but you're dropping some knowing what input you put in uh, will help you clean them up so instead of doing like if you're doing down back um, you might be doing this which is a bit crazy but you can practice help cleaning them up seeing them that way so that's what button log is helpful for uh, game HUD, self-explanatory, although you can turn it off if you want to do some photos. Frame data, important. Those are those two boxes you see at the bottom and basically it's a live frame data calculator. So when you do certain moves, it gives you the data of what the move is, whether you missed it, whether it hits, whether it's unblocked. So. I recommend having this on because it's more accurate than the frame data in the move list. Um, some, some of the move list stuff is wrong, so it's best to use this if you want to look at frames. Now I went through that very quickly, but that is basically the key things about practice options. Of course you've got player one control, if you switch to two you control the other opponent um, and then you can cho change variations if you want to look at something more specific with another character.
and so on. And remember settings to remember settings on. So yeah. That was very quick, but that was essentially practice options in training mode. <laughs> Button lock shows my true spam color. Wow. Interesting. Game needs photo mode, yeah, that'd be good. And hey snoozy apple, hope you're doing well. Literally just came in at the, the crucial point. The main key mode to training mode is AI options and this is basically what your AI does. So we have a few options. Enemy type basically determines what you're going to be using mostly. So you have custom, AI, human, record, playback. Um, so AI basically puts the opponent on AI mode and then they start doing things. So like so and what this is helpful for is funny enough practicing combos and uh, reason being is when you're in training mode and you're learning new combos you essentially are practicing against a still opponent the entire time um, and there's a difference between practicing training mode against an opponent who does nothing or just block and taking it into a live match so using AI mode basically gives you that in-between area of where you can actually practice doing the combos you've learned in a live match environment and that will helpfully bridge the gap between um, just doing it in training mode jumping straight to an online match um, so that's a reason or potential option of why you would use AI mode um, human obviously if you're playing with uh, another person uh, offline then obviously they can take over another um, opponent or another character in order to learn stuff together record and playback kind of go hand in hand so I'm going to do that later so the key one I'm going to focus on is custom um, so custom is basically customizing your AI opponent uh, to options that will help you in training mode um, first mode is block auto basically means that as soon as you land something on an opponent uh, they automatically block the next follow-up move like so and this is helpful basically for combos again because um, you can look at the combo counter but um, if you weren't too sure whether something will combo this is a good way to tell so like if I did a jump in to stand in two it obviously didn't combo there but combos there um, next stance is basically they block in what stance there is or it's basically when they block everything you throw at them no matter what you do Um, this is mainly helpful for maybe finding out frame data of a move, how safe it is on block or punishable on block. Why does everyone want Dan here? <laughs> anyway, hello Bluestein, how's it going? Hopefully you are well. Um, where was I? Oh stance hold is the same as stance basically they just hold blocking whatever stance are standing I mean they are in whether standing or ducking 
Random attack means they block or get hit by attacks, depending on what they feel like. Like so. But one of the key ones is random combo. And basically what this is um, the AI will randomly either block a string or get hit by a string and what this is helpful for is hit confirming. Um, if you don't know what the term hit confirming is, it's basically when you do a move or a string and then you watch to see whether it hits the opponent or is blocked by the opponent and if it hits you confirm it into like your launcher or a special move or something that is generally punishable um, or something that is your extender to your combos um, now the reason why this is helpful is because if I set block all for the moment this is Jackie's main launcher but it's unsafe um, fully punishable but I can't just throw it out after every string because um, I will just get punished so what I need to do is learn how to hit confirm off strings into that special so that if it doesn't get hit if I don't land a hit I stay safe but if I get the hit I can get a full combo and how I personally do that is set the AI to random combo on block and then let's say I wanted to do forward 3 1 into uh, my grease kick special I would input 4 3 1 down back as you can see from uh, the buttons on the screen. What that allows me to do, if forward 3 1 connects, um, I can just tap 4 and then I can get my combo. If it doesn't, I don't have to do anything and stay safe. So, hopefully, I demo this right. Like so. Um, so that's a very good way, especially if you find yourself committing to unsafe moves quite a lot or strings into unsafe moves. This is a very good way of training yourself not to uh, do that. And I believe that is all the block modes, block type. You got normal and flawless or random. Flawless block um, is basically helpful for if you combine all with flawless block. This basically allows you to determine if there's any gaps in strings. Um, now it will always flawless block the first hit of anything you do, but if you do a full string and they flawless block again that's when you know there's an, a gap so I mean Jackie is kind of blessed because she doesn't have like okay she's got two things that have flawless blockable which is a sweep and her back three four which has a gap so when you do this you can determine from an opponent where the gaps are and whether you can interrupt with like fatal blow or practice flawless block punishes or even if you can interrupt with a normal like a down one or a standing one um, that is basically what I use um, flawless block modes for especially when learning a new character and hey Mark how's it going? And I believe that is just block type for the moment, which is cool. Um, in terms of movement, 
you got stand, ducking, hopping, jumping, jump forward, jump back, etc. Mainly for this, you can use jump forward to practice anti S. Um, now, it'll be better to probably record an opponent to do an actual jump kick or jumping punch. But crudely, if you wanted to get spacing of where you should be for your anti air, that is uh, a way to do it. Ducking, you can use to confirm jailing pressure. Uh, if you're not sure about jailing, what I'm talking about, I think you refer back to lesson one. That's when I talk about jailing and pressure, so that would explain all of that. I, mean, I could explain it all again, but it's on that lesson, so <laughs> just watch that and then you'll understand it. And uh, let me quickly catch up here. Okay. Fine, so I need to learn flawless block stuff, so I get to be the master. Hopefully, you do learn. Hmm, okay. Um, and for movement, those are the main ones I use. Duck for pressure, jump forward for anti-air or jump neutral for anti-air. Um, I mean you can use hop to see if you can read hops and how you can punish them. Um, but generally most of the time you'll be having the opponent stand in. Boy, still got a bunch to get through. Reversal mode. Basically, when you have that on, and I'm going to set block mode to all to make it easy, this gives you a reversal attack depending on um, after their blocker move and depending on what attack you've selected. So, in this case, I'll just put throw. So the blocker throw, automatic reversal. Now unfortunately the, the only reversals that is available to you is throw, dashing backwards, um, regular specials and fatal blow which is always in capital letters. Um, so that is helpful for, it's helpful for testing whether certain things you do is safe against a certain character um, if you want to set up crush and blow scenarios without using easy crush and blows if um, if fatal blows can get through certain gaps or if um, Things that normally would be safe, yes, that has gaps, could be interrupted with a special or fatal blow. Alright, thanks for tuning in, Mark, and I'll catch you later. Right. Um, so, reversal mode is good for those things. Um, block attack. It's basically your flawless block options so let's get that now I don't use this per se because I don't feel like I need to um, but yeah it's I would basically if I was going to do those kind of attacks I would do them myself and learn to time it myself I don't really get a gain of the opponent doing it for me but if you find a use for it um, by all means, please do use it. Um, next is yes, lastly, that is up to up to and up three. They do actually have names. Um, delayed get up. 
Now this is not used that often, to be fair. Um, let me see, up to if you flawless block their jumpings, I'm guessing not free if they're aren't in range. Pretty much. Um, up to yes yeah, can be used on after a flawless block for jumpings or the certain gaps that you read and you want to launch the opponent um up freeze is just a safer way to do it in case you mess it up as for delay get up it basically showcases um the different lengths you can um stay on the ground for not many people do this though I mean, I do see it more in tournaments and stuff like this, but generally, like online, you don't really see it. So, as you can see, Scarlet gets up pretty quick after um, being knocked down. But if we put the leg out for short, notice he stays on the ground a little bit longer. And then if you do it for long, down block, let's stay on the ground for even longer. And to do this, all you have to do is hold L2 or stance switch, whatever you put that button on. And bear in mind, if you do do delayed wake up, you can't use your other wake up options like up to, up three, your rolls. Um, all of those are basically cancelled as soon as you do delayed wake up. What you would use this for is if you wanted to pressure someone on wake up, you can determine whether a string is effective or not, um, depending on various uh, wake up timings. So if I set it on random, I can do a sweep to a 4 3 1 and you can see that a long one missed. And you can basically it allows you to see what will hit, what will not hit when you press an opponent on lockdown. Hey Steven, how's it going? Who's cancelled? Wake ups are cancelled, lost uh Yonsei. When you use delayed wake up. Um, right, after delayed wake up, we have get up attacks, um, which is basically what you want your opponent to wake up with. Um, whether it's up to if you do actually get up, ah, oh, some random get that off, right. That should work now. There you go. Um, whether you want up two, up threes, or um, rolls, you know, whatever. Um, this is helpful for learning your character's uh, wake up options, your opponent's wake up options. Um, especially up two and up three, see if you can punish them. Um, like for example, I should say, if I set Scarlet to do wake up uh, up three, wake up up three is normally minus five two frames. Um, that is normally safe. You wouldn't be able to punish that wake up with anything normally. But if you flawless block it, which I hope I can. This is going to be tricky. Come on. There we go. You see that is now minus 10 which actually makes Wake Up Up 3 punishable by Jackie. Set up Mr. Punish. Uh, 
Ah, oh, damn. This is not going to happen tonight, is it? Out of range. There we go. Took me long enough, but there you go. Um, so that's an example of a reason why you would use get up attacks in training mode. Um, just as a rule of thumb, if you flawless block a up two or an up three, it normally makes it five frames more negative than if you just regularly block it. So more often than not, you can actually punish up threes if you have fast enough moves and within range. It's something that's character specific, um, so you do need to look at um, characters and how their frames are with um, flawless blocks, especially on wake ups. Um, but it's useful to know and useful to practice as well because there's a lot of people that do like to wake up often. Um, Alright, let's get rid of that. Breakaway. If you set breakaway on, basically AI breaks away every time. Helpful for knowing what the max damage you can do. Um, in a combo before they break or it's helpful if you wanted to do like a fatal blow combo because fatal blows beat breakaways um, every time like so um, so you can figure out your potential high damage and fatal blow combos that would be a breakaway Um, throw escape. Basically, opponent takes the throw. Um, you might think, why would I need to have this on for whatever reason? Interestingly enough, when people break throws, characters seem to have different distances to how far an opponent is pushed back. So notice here that um, if I like took over Scarlet, for example, actually I don't even need to take over Scarlet. You can notice the distance there is quite significant for Scarlet when you do the throw. But if I reversed it and took over Scarlet and threw Jackie, notice the distance is actually significantly closer. Like. Um, actually, I'll give you the best way to show you case. At that distance, I don't believe Scarlet's sweep will reach. Oh, it does. Never mind. <laughs> but it reaches on both sides. But you can see the distance um, between um, throw taking and not. Another example is with Scorpion. If I'm Jackie and I throw Scorpion and he takes it, um, I'm actually close enough to counter attack with forward 1-2. Uh, bear in mind when you take a throw basically both of you are neutral so you can move at the same time. Um, so if you, it's worthwhile knowing certain characters that might keep you close when you tech um, or may push you further away when you tech. So that's an option as to why you would use throw escape. Uh, finally, quick AI options basically allows you to have this on screen and use the right thumbstick to move down and select certain options. Um, and then change it at the same time. Um, I don't use it because I don't use the DualShock 4 pad because I hate the DualShock 4 pad for fighters but that's just me, personal preference. But yeah, it's there if you wanted to stop 
pausing and changing you can just have the options there and then take it from there that essentially is AI options in training mode last parts is record and playback um, so when you record these basically give you the options of how your opponent should behave so let me switch to Jackie get that on Jackie so that's fine actually let me get rid of that um, so when you record in a slot you take over your opponent's character so in this case when you select record I'll be taking over Scarlet and doing things in order for it to be recorded and replayed I mean you've seen me do this numerous times over the lessons um, so yeah um, just record and do what you want and it automatically plays back um, when you go to playback mode you can choose whether to have the game reset back to the standard um, <laughs> I'm disgusted in this combo I did have proper combos but I just wanted to get this over and done with I'm sorry <laughs> I'll do better once I promise um, so it allows you to reset uh, when it ends or if you have it off then they just keeps uh, looping over um, as it stands um, carrying forward if you want you can use the right thumbstick to um, trigger uh, the replay I like to uphold what people promise me okay I'll show you a quick one uh... I mean, this is a standard B and B, right? Oh dear! I can't do it now. Could you put me under pressure? You know what? It's not going to happen tonight because I am having a shocking night tonight in execution. And watch me land like. For. Yeah, I never will be a Scarlet May. <laughs> I never will be. Never planned to be. Never before. Never again. Anyway, um, I am losing my train of thought due to Blue Steen's rant. Um, recording options. You have four slots. Um, and you use them to. This is basically useful if you want to record multiple options from a certain scenario. So let's say from Scarlet, I want to do the follow-ups from a down one. Uh, it would be helpful if I would take over Scarlet. Right. So you've got down, down one to standing one. and then I can record slot 2 and then I can record slot 3 and finally slot 4 so what then happens is in playback mode you can play back a certain scenario every time and as you can see there the 2 is highlighted to show number 2 if you wanted to do random it would automatically randomly select one of those 4 recorders um, As you can see, it's gone from four to three to two. But you've also got the option of random hidden playback. 
and basically what that is that allows you for it to randomly do things but you can't see the result now you might think what is this helpful for um, this essentially is helpful for dealing with situations so for example like here when you get hit by a down one whatever follow-ups um, Scarlet has you might find things that you can challenge with or let's say Liu Kang's infamous forward four and all the options that he um, he has you might find there are some things you can do to beat the other options um, and then figure out how to play around his forward four effectively if you can um, I generally advise before recording do something like with a down one or dark or I don't know neutral jump something before you go into the actual recording uh, reason being is you don't really want to just react to whatever move you've got going um, this basically just gives you a sensory warning that something is about to happen and you know getting yourself ready for the actual situation to deal with And with that, that is essentially all the options available in training mode. And what you kind of do to help you effectively use it is you combine a bunch of them in order to get you scenarios. So let's say, for example, for whatever reason, you've never faced Jackie before. I don't know why you wouldn't have in this case, but let's say you haven't. Uh, and you wanted to learn some things about Jackie um, let me take over Jackie that will help yep um, so you can go to the move list and it's in this Scarlet's moves ah oh, it's because I'm on record that's why that helps you can go to the move list go to Jackie strings and then tag a few let's say you've just been you face one that did the low strings every single time um, and he wants to learn about them you can tag the move list take control of Jackie set the opponent to block all and flawless just in case there's any gaps I've got to take that off you also have to remember to keep an eye on your settings as well otherwise it will frustrate you so back three flawless uh, is minus seven so that's pretty much safe that is safe because you're learning about throwing data here that overhead is minus 12 but with all that pushback it seems to be fairly safe but maybe you know at this point you can check whatever move that um, Jackie might follow up with from that point um, and then you've got the other low, which actually has a gap and is negative. So technically your turn. I like how Gab uses Jackie Potato. Ah, poor Jackie. And that's an example of how you can combine essentially move list and AI options to look into a certain character. Um, and with that, that is pretty much training mode. By the way, I'm not calling her potato. Well, you can if you want, because a lot of people do. Um, I don't mind. I mean, upgraded is kind of crazy, and first round KO is a bit silly. But there you go. But essentially what I did, that is essentially training mode. I know that was a whole ton of information there, which I don't expect you to remember all of them because that was a lot of information overload um, what I am hoping is that me going through this hopefully clearly um, if not by all means ask questions um, is for when you want to enter training mode and do things to have this lesson literally 
beside you whether on your phone or just watch it at the same time so then you can learn about the different options as you are using it um, to help you basically get used to uh, use the training mode and all the options because as I said it is quite extensive but it is important if you want to improve as a player people complain about headaches wow I lost he won't remember <laughs> well that's the point I don't expect you to remember all of them because you know there's a lot of options there's a lot of things you can do in this mode um, which is why I say it's um, it's important to get used to doing it but I said you're not going to remember it over time and experience you start remembering uh, you'll start remembering things and then things will come naturally um, but yeah please by all means you rewatch this lesson again or when you decide to try training mode yourself and look at things like just to experiment with it yeah have this lesson beside you have it playing and try things out for yourself um, so with that I have to say that is the end of the lesson and that's also the end of block 2 or level 2 I should say lessons um, for those who wasn't here at the start when I first started doing this um, the dojo I broke down lessons into level 1, level 2 and level 3 level 1 was basically like um, system stuff like throws the poke system things like that level two was basically more like the in-depth intricacy stuff um like frame data um applica application of frame data this training mode uh, resources hitboxes stuff like that more technical side of fighting games so with that lessons now will be on to level three which is basically more about mindset and applying the stuff that you've learned before and there's a reason why I've done the lessons in these ways over the weeks because you kind of need to have a decent understanding of everything I've taught from week one up to this point in order to understand and learn level three lessons effectively so it will be a couple of weeks or so before I go into level 3 um, before I, my next stream when I do level 3 lessons maybe if, if, a few weeks we'll see um, but in that period of time I would recommend for people to revisit lessons and try out things beforehand of all the previous stuff I've talked about some things might be adjusted due to patches from NRS but I'm pretty sure 95% of everything I've said still applies uh, and the main reason being is because you need understanding for 1 and 2 to tackle level 3's first topic which is going to be how to lab a problem so in addition to revisiting those lessons in comments and stuff I would like for you to leave me suggestions of any particular or any specific scenarios that you have problems with um, whether it's a certain character or certain character string or moves that they do or certain matchup whichever um, suggest some topics uh, or scenarios that you struggle with and in that lesson of how to lab a problem I will basically with the rest of you go through a couple of those scenarios and see if we can figure out solutions to those problems <laughs> you can't lap space here <laughs> okay um, so yeah that would be it for or the start for level 3 lessons so with that for those watching on YouTube thanks for tuning in uh, like subscribe all those uh, funky business and I will catch you next time take care and peace <laughs>